For those of you who are new to the room, my name is John Fortune. I'm the head analyst at ETI. We teach people to trade the Forex market uh, like the big boys in the banks, which is with psychology. But what we're going to do today is we're going to go through and create a plan and we're going to see how we're going to set up for this week ahead. We're going to look at some of the fundamentals and together we're going to do a fundamental uh, assessment for the week and then we're going to have a look at some of the technicals. Now, we normally uh, take a little time going through the fundamentals, but this week we're going to speed the fundamentals up a little bit because uh, I think most of the people in the room uh, get the picture of what we're doing on the fundamentals. So uh, for those new in the room, the reason we do this is because it means that we can create a plan and we can execute a plan each week uh, and not trade based around our emotions, which is unfortunately how a lot of new traders trade. So the first thing we're going to do is the weekly fundamental assessment, and we're going to do that now. Now, last week we had uh, the UK elections. Uh, we can have a quick look at the UK uh, elections on the chart in a minute. and We can discuss it before we start this week's uh, weekly fundamental assessment. So as you can see, if we go to the pound US dollar, Now, last week, uh, and just before we start, by the way, when we review these things uh, as Forex traders, it's our job to look at these markets without having biases one way or the other when it comes to politics. But looking at the charts, you can see that from the failure to get a majority government, uh, the traders and the institutions saw that as instability or uncertainty coming into uh, the British economy especially coming up to the uh, negotiations with the European Union, which I think is due to start in about 10 days. So as a result, uh, they would have liked to have really seen uh, a majority government, and they would have seen that as far more stable uh, and secure going into the negotiations uh, than we uh, would currently have at the moment, which is, uh, I'm not actually sure what the latest update is, but I believe uh, a it is being struck with the Conservatives and the DUP to form a majority of about 12, I think so. But as we can see, it sold off uh, last week uh, from the exit poll, and the reason that we're talking about this now is because this is relevant for the coming week. Had there have been a uh, majority government, and there would have been, this would have been viewed as stability, so we would have been able to look for trades, we would have seen this go the other way, and we would have seen looking for trades to the upside, but because they failed uh, to get that majority and it sold off, we're going to be trading very carefully around the pound pairs this week because we're still in uh, a fairly uncertain situation where you know, maybe the deal could fall apart between the DUP and the Conservative government. Uh, anything could really happen at this stage, so it's, it's still a little bit fragile. So if you are trading the pound pairs, uh, just bear this in mind. We could see some volatility if we get some unexpected announcements uh, regards to the election that we've just had. So with that said, we're going to go over to uh, the uh, fundamentals for this week. Uh, and like I say, we're going to do these a little bit quicker so we can get on to the uh, technicals and some of the opportunities we're looking for. So we can see here that we have uh, pretty much nothing today. Uh, in fact, if I scroll up a little bit here, you can see uh, there's nothing real, no major news coming out. Uh, the major news uh, on the Forex Factory calendar is denoted by the red uh, folder here. So you can see that uh, tomorrow we do have the pound CPI in the morning, which is a year-on-year -year basis. So this is quite important. You want to keep an eye out on it for this. Uh, and we also have the US dollar uh, PPI in the afternoon. So let's just jot these down. We're going to put the uh, CPI tomorrow for the pound as uh, uh, fairly major and we're going to put the US dollar tomorrow at a, a uh, important but um, slightly less important we're going to mark that with a, a, lower, a, a lowercase x. We do then have the Chinese industrial production uh, it can affect many different currencies because obviously China is one of the world's uh, 
largest exporters, if not the world's largest exporter. So it has a knock-on effect, uh, the economy of China, uh, with the rest of the world, as does uh, the US. But as we spoke about before, what we want to be looking to uh, predominantly is the Australian uh, pair, because uh, China does buy and it imports plenty of uh, especially raw materials from uh, Australia, such as iron ore and coal. So if the uh, Chinese economy is badly affected, then that will have a knock-on effect on the Australian economy as they seek to import less from Australia and vice versa. If uh, there is a positive uh, news announcement uh, for the Chinese economy, then that will have a positive effect, generally speaking, on the Australian dollar. So we're going to put this down uh, as a small x on uh, Wednesday. A small x because it's an indirect uh, news announcement. Uh, it's not actually a news announcement uh, for the Aussie dollar, but it's indirectly through uh, the Chinese industrial production. So the next we have on Wednesday, you can see the uh, average earnings index, which is at 9.30 for the pound. So again, we're going to put down a small x for the pound. And then on Wednesday, and you will start to see now coming towards the end of the week that uh, we have some no less than four interest rate decisions this week. So we need to be very careful about how we trade this week. And this is why uh, doing our uh, fundamental assessment this week is going to be very important to the way we trade. So you can see on Wednesday, we have the CPI and the core CPI, the core retail sales and the retail sales. But uh, although we're going to put this down as a small X at one o'clock for the US dollar uh, on Wednesday, uh, we're going to have a small X here. The reason this is a small X is because these are very important uh, numbers, but with the FOMC and the federal funds rate, the interest rate decision from the FOMC coming out at seven o'clock, it's highly unlikely that this is going to be a big market mover because all eyes will be on the interest rate decision at seven o'clock on Wednesday. So we're going to put a big X in on Wednesday. And as you can see, uh, we are also looking for a potential cut. Sorry. Hang on a second. Uh, can you see the uh, can you see the highlighter pen? If you can see the highlighter pen, could somebody just say yes for me? Okay, great. Okay, fine. So you see the highlighter pen. Okay, great. So as you can see, uh, we are looking for a potential interest rate rise and cut uh, because it is currently at one and looking to push it up to 1.25 uh, in line with what they did previously. Now this uh, is expected, however it can still have a uh, large impact on the price. Sometimes they will price it in uh, and we can have a look at the US dollar index in a minute and see what they might be doing uh, in regards to this. But if you are trading with the US dollar index pairs uh, or any pairs with the US dollar in, uh, in it, then keep your eye. Seven o'clock on Wednesday is going to be the big one uh, for the US dollar. Okay, so if we scroll down a little bit further, uh, you can see we do have New Zealand GDP quarter on quarter uh, on Wednesday as well, which we're going to put in for the New Zealand uh, Wednesday. And then coming into Thursday, so the FOMC on Wednesday is the first of our interest rate decisions this week. We have on the Thursday morning the employment rate and the unemployment rate for the Aussie, which is going to be important. So we're going to put this down for the Aussie.
on Thursday morning. And then we have the uh, LIBOR rate, which is the Swiss, Swiss National Bank interest rate decision uh, Thursday morning. So for the franc, we're going to go down and put a large X in. We have retail sales as well for the pound on Thursday. So you can see as well that uh, there are a number of uh, news events for the pound as well, uh, even over and above the uh, potential unexpected announcements we could get from the uh, general election that's just gone. And then on Thursday, we have uh, the third interest rate decision of the week, which is for the pound. So we're going to put a large X in for the pound. And we have unemployment claims on the Thursday as well. Uh, for the um, for the US dollar index, but that will just be down as a small x. And if we scroll down here, you can see we have Carney speaking uh, at nine o'clock. In fact, let's have a little look to see where he's speaking. Uh, due to speak at the Mansion House Bank as a merchant's dinner. Okay, so he's speaking at a dinner, so it is not uh, likely to be as volatile as, say, uh, something like this, which is, uh, say, the press conference after the interest rate decision or the monetary uh, policy summary over here. So we will leave that one off for the time being. Uh, and then on Friday, we have the fourth interest rate decision of the week, which is for the Bank of Japan. And as you can see on the Bank of Japan, it's expected to remain the same. Uh, if we go back to uh, the other two that we were looking at as well, you can see that for the franc and the LIBOR rate is expected to remain unchanged, uh, as is the Great British Pound uh, interest rate decision on Thursday to remain unchanged. So we have pretty much plotted everything now into our uh, fundamental assessment for the week. Uh, let me just get rid of this, uh, and then we can have a look at some of the technicals. So we have uh, Carney speaking on uh, Thursday evening, which we're going to leave because he's only speaking at dinner, so we don't expect much volatility there. And then on Friday, we have the interest rate decision coming in the early hours of Friday morning. As you can see, it's tentative, uh, which means that the release date is uh, uh, or the release time uh, has not yet been confirmed, but it's going to be somewhere between midnight on Thursday and 7.30 uh, on Friday morning. So that's all the news we can see, the fundamental news coming out for this week. If we go back and have a look now at the, uh, the fundamental assessment sheet, you can see that certainly for the pound and the US dollar, uh, there are it's a it's a fairly fairly heavy week and the fact that we have uh, an interest rate decision for the US dollar, an interest rate decision for the Japanese yen, interest rate decision for the pound, and an interest rate decision for the franc means that we could have a very volatile week this week. So we do have to be extra careful. But looking at this, we can see that we have <coughs> plenty of space down here on the euro. We have plenty of space on the CAD. Now, if we're looking at trading the CAD this week, we're going to go in a minute and look at oil because if we're, we're interested in the CAD because we have a pretty clear run on CAD this week and we can get some tight entries on this. Then we want to go and have a look at oil and we want to see what oil is doing to give us uh, a potential directional bias on the Canadian dollar. So we're going to go and do that in a minute. And if we look down here, we can also see that uh, We've got uh, Japanese yen pretty much clear in the lead up to the interest rate decision on Friday. So if we want to get involved in the Japanese yen, we're going to look to either manage it through the interest rate decision by allowing ourselves to have a large stop. So we don't want to be involved in any Japanese yen, yen pairs with tight stops on Friday uh, where our stop loss is about, you know, uh, say 10 or 12 pips or 15 pips from the uh, from the price because you could very easily get spiked out on those interest rate decisions. So just bear that in mind. Otherwise, we have a pretty clear run on Frank as well leading up to Thursday. So the, the general plan for this week is going to be looking for uh, the Euro pairs and the CAD pairs. And we can look at CAD Frank 
uh, at the beginning of the week. We're also going to look at the Aussie pairs because we only have two small announcements and if we can position ourselves in the Aussie at the beginning of the week, we should have plenty of room uh, to sit through these two minor announcements on Wednesday and Thursday and the same with the New Zealand as well. So if we look at it, we pretty much have a clear run on Euro, the CAD, the Japanese yen up till Friday, the franc up till Friday, and the Aussie New Zealand as well. So uh, although we have these interest rate decisions, if we, if we plan our trades like this, we can see that we can avoid uh, getting unstuck. So let's head over to the technicals and we're going to have a look at some of the opportunities that we're looking at this week. And what we're going to do is, uh, for those of you who uh, follow the uh, weekly forecast uh, on YouTube every week, you'll see that we changed the format slightly this week to give it a more accurate, um, representation of what we're actually looking for and the trading opportunities rather than looking just specifically um, at the, uh, the technical analysis. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go in through and look at some of the actual opportunities that we're looking at this week. So let me just get rid of this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the US dollar index. Uh, why are we going to look at the US dollar index? Because the US dollar index is a basket uh, of all the currencies uh, combined paired against the US dollar. The euro is number one at about 50%. So if you see the US dollar index going up, generally speaking, you'll probably see the euro coming down. And if you see US, US dollar index uh, pushing to the downside, you're going to be seeing strength almost certainly in the euro pairs. So looking at the US dollar index, you can see that it has, it is in somewhat of a down channel like this. And in fact, if I add the uh, bottom of the channel, uh, you'll be able to see the channel a bit more clearly. So we do have the US dollar index trending down in the four hours and we're looking at the four hour chart this week as well as opposed to the daily because this will give you a more immediate picture of the setups that we're looking for for the week ahead rather than a slightly longer term uh, outlook. Uh, just before I start then, there's a question from, uh, I can see there's somebody said there's a question from somebody down here. Uh, what about oil CAD? Okay, yeah, oil CAD, uh, 1530 uh, Wednesday. Uh, are you talking about the oh the crude oil inventories? Yeah, 3:30 p.m. Uh, well spotted, Tim. So Tim was just saying, uh, which we actually missed on here, but he is in fact correct that on the uh, Wednesday you can see we have crude oil inventories down here. It says US dollar index but it will mainly be affecting uh, the uh, Canadian pairs so uh, it is important uh, for us to put this down. Well spotted Tim, CAD is going to be on Wednesday but it is only going to be uh, a small X anyway so uh, we'll put that down uh, for the CAD on Wednesday. It does, doesn't uh, really change the uh, the main outlook for what we're looking at this week. Okay, so can you can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? You can hear me. Okay, fine. Sorry, we just had a. Um, we had it cut out at uh, our end, so I just wanted to double check. So yeah, so it doesn't change the uh, the major outlook of what we're looking for uh, this week, but it is uh, Tim is right, we need to put that down. So going back to the US dollar index, we are looking at the US dollar index still being in a downtrend, and in fact, we have a pattern here, which is really a correction uh, this kind of move, this is actually a, a pattern, one of the patterns that we look at in the live room. Uh, and as you can see, it has broken out of this pattern and it has started to 
uh, resolve itself to the downside. We did get a breakdown below the 12145 area, and we were looking from here for a move down to the 12080 and a continuation of this pattern over here. However, as you can see, it came back and tested the 12145 area as resistance, and instead of bouncing, it broke back up through. So it leaves us in a position with the US dollar index where we are still looking for further declines to the downside. However, uh, at the moment, it is correcting and it is moving to the upside. So it leaves us with a overall bearish bias still on the US dollar index. That's the predominant bias we're going to take. But uh, we are going to uh, note the fact that it has pulled up quite sharply and it is still correcting. So we're going to have a neutral to bearish bias on the US dollar index. Why are we going to have a neutral to bearish bias on the US dollar index? Because especially with FOMC this week, you may find that this just accumulates like this in this area, does something like this, because that way they can set themselves up either for a breakout upside to the upside or they can use this as a chance to push themselves back down depending on what uh, comes out of the FOMC. So don't be surprised if you do see this act in a neutral way and pretty much move sideways for the rest of the week. So we're going to have a look at oil now because oil, as we know, affects the uh, Canadian dollar. Now, oil is slightly more clear cut, uh, unlike the US dollar index, uh, where we have a bearish to neutral bias on the oil. We do have a bearish bias now on the, on the, uh, on the oil because, as you can see, uh, we had a support level over here at 46.93. Price did come down and test this a uh, number of times and we were in fact looking for this support level to hold uh, and a continuation of this overall move here potentially. But the bigger trend is still to the downside so uh, it never came and it looks now like it's going to continue down to the 44.06 level and then we've got a target down here at 43.380. So if we're looking for these targets to the downside in oil, uh, first of all the support level 44.06 uh, and then the target at 43.380. We have to give oil a bearish bias, so we're going to be looking uh, for CAD pairs to the downside in the coming week. You can see, though, uh, today being uh, a day where the market constructs, usually on a Monday, it has started to pull back up to this channel here. And I can uh, put this channel down here as well. So although we're getting this corrective move back up to the top of the trend line over here, we do expect maybe a retest of the confluence area of this resistance at 46.93 and also the downward sloping trend line and then a turnaround in this area to continue uh, this move that we have here to the downside. So we have a bearish bias on oil for this week uh, and, and then also by extension uh, the CAD pairs as long as this stays intact and it stays below the resistance area of 46.93. So let's go and have a look at some of the actual opportunities we're looking at then this week in the pairs. So the first one we're going to look at and then we will take some uh, questions. The first one we're going to look at is the Euro US dollar. Now we have two important support areas on the euro US dollar as you can see it is trending to the upside it's making higher highs we're seeing this as a correction and we're looking for price to move from this area we were looking for if you uh, look at the uh, weekly forex forecast that we do uh, and goes on YouTube we're looking for a move from this area up to the target at the 1.12950 now it has started to make its way already to here uh, to start to do that uh, from this morning. What you might see, however, is you may see a pullback, and maybe even retest the 1.1160 support area down here, or even further down to the 1.1168 area down here. So as long as it maintains itself above the 1.11168 area of support, then we're going to have a bullish bias on the euro US dollar in uh, on the euro US dollar pair and we're going to be looking at taking longs up to the target area of 1.12950. Now again uh, depending on uh, when or how uh, 
one is to get a, an opportunity in this pair and some of these pairs we have already taken this morning before we, uh, before we came into the webinar today. But if someone was looking uh, to get involved in this, uh, you would have to consider the uh, fundamental assessment that we've just done uh, and bear in mind that we do have uh, FOMC on uh, Friday. So one way you could look uh, potentially with the FOMC in mind is to make sure you have large stops on these pairs for wherever you get involved in. So. Uh, as I said before, we do the weekly fundamental assessment not just to see when we can trade with tight stops, but also when we have to trade with large, larger stops. So bear this in mind uh, if you're looking for longs up to the 1.12950 area this week on the euro US dollar. The next pair we're going to look at is the Aussie US dollar. Now the Aussie US dollar. Uh, looks like it could be setting up for a nice move this week. Now on the Aussie US dollar, you can see that we have a continuation pattern here. And we have price coming back down to the broken resistance area of 0 0.75170. And we're looking for this to continue to the upside and we're looking at 0 0.75871 as the target to the upside on this pair, potentially even higher, but the first target that we're going to be looking for is 0 0.7587, and we're going to see around this area uh, how price is reacting. This again uh, is one we don't have uh, too much on the Aussie, especially up until uh, Wednesday, we have nothing on the Aussie. Uh, same with the US dollar index. So the plan on this pair, and this is one of the ones that we took uh, this morning. The plan on this pair is for this to be pushing up into this kind of area uh, before Wednesday so that we have plenty of room uh, from when on the smaller time frames uh, we, took the en uh, we took the entry and we positioned our stop. So we don't want to be involved in this uh, if it's very close to the stop come Wednesday, but we have one, two days, and even in fact we have three days because uh, the first, uh, let me see on Wednesday when the uh, Australian one is on Wednesday. Okay, so we can we can say apart from the uh, the Chinese news coming out Wednesday morning, uh, if that is not to affect say the Aussie very much at all, uh, then we will have three days potentially up till Wednesday night uh, to get some air in between here and uh, our stop. Plus, we could also potentially see this uh, complete before FOMC. That would be the best. Um, scenario, in which case we can be flat out of these pairs uh, with our profits in the bank before the volatility kicks in, uh, which is really when uh, the big boys and the institutions get involved. So that's not really our uh, piece of the cake. We want to be uh, trading around those events if possible. So this is one we're looking for for this week. Uh, and the, the only risk is we could see a pullback into the 0 0.751 area uh, of resistance over here, turning support. However, these are areas, these aren't um, these aren't specific levels, so we're seeing this currently from where it sits as being a fulfillment uh, of a pullback to the support level. So we'll see how one, how this one plays out, but uh, this is one we're going to be uh, keeping our eye on, and we're also going to be looking to potentially add, if possible, uh, depending on the um, uh, how it sets up before FOMC. So we're at half past now, so what I can do is let me have a little look, see if... Uh, We'll do one more, which is a slightly, uh, could be a, a more of a position trade that we're looking for. And we're going to go down to the uh, New Zealand franc. And as you can see, the franc is, uh, we have the LIBOR rate on Thursday. So we have one, two, three days up until Thursday uh, to get involved in the franc. And the one we're going to be keeping our eye on uh, is the New Zealand franc. And the reason we're going to be keeping our eye on this is because, as you can see, uh, New Zealand franc is currently in a range here, denoted by the resistance levels. Uh, when it broke through the level here, came down and tested the bottom, pulled up, retested the bottom, bounced from this port at the bottom of the range up to the top of the range. 
price then sold off from the top of the range here down to the bottom of the range at 0 0.6804. It then broke back above into the range and it's made its way up to the top at the 0 0.69930. So one of the trades that we're looking for uh, potentially this week, and this will be a larger, uh, more longer term trade potentially than some of the other pairs that we've been looking at, which is why we don't have a specific target on it, is if we start to see uh, the right kind of uh, bearish patterns or formations in this area, then we're going to be looking at taking trades at the very least back down to the range bottom at 0.68040. But because in the longer term time frame, it is trending to the downside, we're going to ideally look to hold uh, and get a breakout of this range and a continuation to the downside. So this is one that we're keeping our eye on. In fact, we've been looking at this for the past possibly even three weeks, I think. Uh, it's certainly been in the uh, the ETI blog, I think, for the last two weeks. But we've been looking at getting involved with this uh, to the downside because of the overall uh, direction of the trend. And this is one of the techniques uh, uh, that you use when it comes to trading ranges. So those are three opportunities that we're looking for. Uh, it could be very good opportunities. Bear in mind the Uh, fundamental analysis that we've done that is very important when deciding well for not only what pairs to trade but uh, how to trade them the and how to uh, we're going to look techniques more on a Monday now at stops, providing for example, some uh, specific set entries for you guys. So bear those in mind, uh, uh, but those are the three I can see now coming up to look for so and you can trade minutes, uh, in your uh, own time or your own way however you like. But it will help you uh, just to give you a couple of the opportunities that we're actually going to be looking for in the live room and, and the real trades that we're going to be looking at taking in the live room this week. So I can't see uh, any questions. Just need to double check. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's any questions. Uh, Steven says no questions. Okay, thanks for letting me know, Steven. Okay, great. So we're going to hand back to uh, Ben. Uh, is there anything you want to say, Ben, before we wrap up? No, just that that was uh, that was fantastic. Hopefully, again, um, you guys enjoyed um, another great webinar from John. There, lots of value in there for you. Um, as always, if you do want to, to explore it a little bit further over Ethical Trading Institute, then you can hop over to their website or drop John an email. Um, alternatively, you can contact us at support at portexmarkets.com. Um, and as always, you will get email updates um, when we're doing these webinars. But we're pretty consistently doing these at 12 o'clock on a Monday now. Um, and Portex will be running separate ones um, on a Wednesday. But yeah, if there's no other questions from, from anybody else, then uh, I think we'll wrap it up there and um, look forward to seeing you all next week. Thanks, John. Okay, no problem. Ben, just before we go, uh, yeah. give me two seconds. Uh, Tim, are you st is Tim still in the room? <laughs> hey, you're very welcome, Stephen. Tim's still there. Yeah, yeah there Tim, did you, yeah. did you get an email this morning? Uh, one of the girls here sent you an email this morning. Just want to check if you got it. It was about one of the questions that you asked. You did get it. Okay, great. Yeah, that's all I wanted to check. I got it. Okay, no problem. Okay, so uh, it doesn't look like there's any questions. So uh, thanks for today, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, John. Bye, everyone. Cheers. Bye-bye.